I, I um, on the air the other day, I, I said, you know, there's high expectations for this team. And then I caught myself and I said, we, we say that every year. <laughs> I, I am, I am buying, I am buying the hype. Um, there's lots of things to be excited about with this football team. Um, they made the playoffs last year, which, which a lot of people with the way they started, didn't think that was going to happen. Uh, a young coach who midway through the season, light bulb went off. Hey, let me start running the ball more. And it started working. You know, he handed over the play calling duties to, to, to the, the coordinator as opposed to doing it himself. Um, the defense is, you know, defense is your forte. Defense could be awesome. The other news is going to be obviously what's going on with the Philadelphia Eagles. And I'll tell you something, man. I met my friend a long time ago, Deuces Rogers from 6ABC. And he, I'll tell you what, when he was at ESPN, I just absolutely loved watching him when he was doing that. And now that he's the number one guy in Philadelphia, we got to bring on our friend Deuces Rogers here from 6ABC. He also did some great stuff for us with Jacob Media. Deuces, how you doing, man? Hey, how are you? For one second, I'm backstage. Next second, I'm in the studio with you. How you doing, Dan? All good, man. I, hey, one thing I've learned, Deuces, the Philadelphia Eagle fans, I mean, I, I now get a chance to cover them, like, you know, straight on. Some of the most passionate people I've ever met. Some of the most under misunderstood people I've ever met. But one thing is for sure, intelligent, knowledgeable, and passionate. Absolutely, absolutely. On the ride into work today, I'm listening to talk radio, and you got guys. They're still talking about Carson Wentz, who hasn't been here in a couple of years. They're comparing Carson Wentz to Jalen Hurts. Uh, but in football in this town, it it is literally a year round sport. Uh, July, uh, we're still what three weeks away from training camp. We're talking Eagles football. Uh, back in March, they were talking the NFL draft. They literally talk football 365 days a year in this town, and and I absolutely love it. Football's king here. Are you buying the hype with this year's 2022 Eagles? And, and, uh, that's a great question. I, I um, on the air the other day, I, I said, you know, there's high expectations for this team. And then I caught myself and I said, we, we say that every year. <laughs> I, I am, I am buying, I am buying the hype. Um, there's lots of things to be excited about with this football team. Um, they made the playoffs last year, which, which a lot of people with the way they started, didn't think that was going to happen. Uh, a young coach who, Midway through the season, light bulb went off. Hey, let me start running the ball more. And it started working. You know, he handed over the play calling duties to, to, to the, the coordinator as opposed to doing it himself. Um, the defense is, you know, defense is your forte. Defense could be awesome. Um, getting a little older um, with some of the guys along the defensive line, but um, they could be awesome. I, I am buying the hype, but, but the key, and I'm sure we'll talk about this, the key with every single football team in the NFL is the quarterback position. If you don't have, you don't have to have elite play, but you have to have service, serviceable play at the quarterback position. And that's the question mark hanging over this football team. Jalen Hurts, he, you know, going back two years ago, he, he started the last four games of the season when he decides to move on from Carson Wentz, showed some signs. Last year, up and down, but showing some signs. But can he make that leap to the next level this year? Can he do enough to keep this team going forward? That's the million-dollar question. Don't you think the three big concerns or questions going into this season, head coach, D coordinator, and quarterback, they're all intertwined with no, one another. So let's start with this one. Are you a fan and do you buy into Jalen Hurts? I'm a fan, yes. I am a fan. Um, I'll start with that right there. Probably one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, conscientious, the you talk to the teammates, and that's always a barometer for me. You talk to the teammates, nobody will say a bad thing about this guy. I mean, they they looked up to him. He's one of the youngest guys on the team, and they look up to him as a leader. Um, talking to some of the, the the guys on the inside, he literally is first guy in, last guy out guy. Now he's not one of those guys looking to get out of work early. He's he's there before a lot of the coaches get there. Um, you you gotta love that. So in terms of the character of the player and his work ethic, I'm all on board. In terms of his on-field production, this is where it's a little shaky. Um, he led the team in, in rushing, which is great. You know, I think he had a dozen rushing touchdowns. Um, that, that's great. I, I had one former 
NFL front office guy tell me recently when it comes to Jalen Hurts, and, it, and this is the way it is for all quarterbacks, you can have a running quarterback, a quarterback who will audible, you know, see something, do something different, take off and run. But there's going to be three, four, maybe five times a game when there's going to be a third and long. And he's got to he's got to anchor himself down in the pocket and make that throw. And this former NFL executive said he's not convinced that he can do that. And like I said, you could have these great quarterbacks, you know, Lamar Jackson's, the Jalen Hurts, you know, these guys who like to you know move around, and do things. But do you have that guy that's going to be – it doesn't have to be Steve Young, but Steve Young, he could run. But when Steve Young had to sit back, down, sit back in that pocket and wait that extra half a beat knowing he's going to get drilled but still make that, that, that pass, you know, can Jalen Hurts do that? And that's what we don't know yet. And I think that's why – I think the Eagles saw enough to stick with him for this year. You know, there was some talk that they were going to try to trade for Russell Wilson. And maybe the price was too high. Maybe they decided – maybe we liked some of the guys coming out in the draft next year. So this this year for Jalen in terms of his NFL future here in Philadelphia, I think this is an important year. Um, if he can do enough where they like, ah, we can stick with this guy, that's great. If not, they'll probably move on. Deuce, is this here, – here's, here's my place with him. If Colin Kaepernick can get a football team to a Super Bowl, there's a lot of style similarities there. Mm -hmm. Not the most accurate guy, but accurate enough, especially if they're in third and short when we're talking play calling and moving the sticks and not playing behind the sticks. They have a great running attack. That team had a great running attack. I think comparing Jalen to the Joe Burrows of the world or the Justin Herberts, oh. you're never going to get there. He's never going to be that guy. He's never going to be accurate. But can you get to a Super Bowl and win a Super Bowl? Hell, they got to a Super Bowl with a substitute teacher and Nick Foles. Yeah. <laughs> so they can they can get there. The question will be, will they allow it? And I threw this out, Deuces. I don't know if you would subscribe to this. If Jalen shows me where he throws for 3,800 yards this year, the football team wins 12 games. They win the division, which they're expected to win the division or predicted to. I would come to him and go, instead of giving him a $45 million deal, I'd give him a short-term three-year deal at $30 million. We, we don't have to rip anything apart. We can use those two first-round draft choices next year in the draft to fill the O-line, which is aging. Kelsey's retiring. Lane Johnson probably has three more years left. That tops. So you're going to be able to still do it on the fly and not have to rip it up. That's some angle that I – I'm expecting to see. I think he's going to get better because of the talent they've added to the team like A.J. Brown. Do you do you subscribe to what I'm saying? I do. I do. And I, I'm glad you brought up a, like the Colin Kaepernick scenario. And I even I even looked to the the Ravens a few years back when they had yeah. Trent Dilfer. You know, Trent, great guy, but he wasn't, you know, he wasn't your, you know, he wasn't Dan Marino or anything like that. <laughs> but he was, he, he did enough. And you had a, a great, great defense. And it's funny, going back to your previous question, you're saying the three things that worry you, you know, about the team. And you brought up the defense. And they all, you mentioned, they all kind of correlate. If the defense can do a better job of getting off the field, and getting the ball back into Jalen Hurts' hand, and they can run the ball and control, you know, have the time of possession be in their favor, that'll be a big help. And and I think they improved the defense enough this year. Listen, the 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 D coordinator Gannon got um got Jonathan Gannon got a lot of heat for for being kind of vanilla. Um, and he'll never tell you this, but a lot a lot of the year they're playing with special teamers special teamers on, on defense. And, you know, I don't know that he trusted those guys enough to, to, to run a blitz, you know, and, and to be in the right places. So he just kept it really, really safe. They upgraded the defense. They got James Bradbury to go opposite Darius Slay in the cornerback position. They pick up Hassan Reddick. Um, they list him as a linebacker, but he's going to be, a, you know, an edge rusher, you know, going after the quarterback. I think, I think you'll see them be a little bit more aggressive on defense you know, you get Brandon Graham coming back, hopefully knock on wood, you know, at his, you know, I think he's 34 coming off the Achilles. You'll see what that might be. But I, I think if they can have the strong enough defense, control the ball, and he has a good year, you're right. Yeah, do the Kirk Cousins things with him, you know, where he's signing short contracts, getting paid a ton of money. You know what I mean? Um, I don't think you need to go out and give him the, you know, the crazy Mahomes contract or anything like that or, you know, Prescott contracts. I don't, and I don't think he's worth all that. But, yeah, do enough. And then, you, like you said, there's other positions to to upgrade on this roster. You mentioned the offensive line. You know, they, they've they got a great guy at left tackle in Jordan Mailata, who, you know, guys, I mean, I'm at, it's, he's a freak. You know, he's hey, just, Deuces, is that not the – I'll tell you what, when they move that team across the country, I mean, they may have to get like a C4 
<laughs> that is the biggest team I've. Dude, I mean, the Toledo's going to be working overtime when you put those guys on the scale. That's the biggest team I've seen in a long time. This is going to sound really, really silly, but Jordan Mailata, I remember the first time I saw him in the locker room, the thing that stuck out to me was his feet, his toes. He had, like, Fred Funstone feet. I mean, like, his, his, no, his, no, his big toe was like a fist. I mean, the thing was – but guys, guys, the nicest guy in the world. I mean, like a giant teddy bear. But he's, he's six eight, you know, probably 350 at left tackle. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, my gosh. You know, you got him and you got Lane Johnson on the other side who's, you know, who's a, a workout monster. Anybody wants to go. And a Jordan team. Davis who makes them all look small. Yeah, yeah. There, there's, some, there's some big, big dudes uh, on this team. You're right. You're right. Football, <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Back in the day, you know, you're, you're, when when you were when you were playing, uh, what were you, what was your playing weight? Two eighty five. <laughs> I'm a small. Hey, that's a kicker today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, it's crazy. Hey, Deuce, just two last questions for you. Okay, listen, this looks like a theme schedule. Watch this going oh. into week seven here. Oh, oh Which it, team it, are you looking forward to the most? Watch this, Vikings week two, the Justin Jefferson game. Uh huh. Week three, the Commander Wentz game at FedEx, okay? The Doug Peterson game yes. in week four. Then you got Kyler Murray and the Zach Ertz show. Yes. Then you got, of course, the Cowboys going into the bye. What game out of the gate are you looking forward to the most this year? I want to be a nerd and say I'm looking, for, looking forward to them all. I, I got to tell you, the, the Wentz game. I, I am, I am so too. looking forward to that. I he didn't leave here on the best of terms. Um, it's, it's funny. This, this town is still obsessed with them. It's like the, the ex-girlfriend. You know, you <laughs> whether, whether, whether you broke up with her or she broke up with you, you're still keeping tabs. You're checking her Facebook page. I mean, this team is obsessed with this guy. And just to see, you know, how it might be him going up against them. You know what I mean? Like, if he has a great game, oh, my gosh. You know, this team, they're going to set the, they're gonna set the city on fire. But, you know, if the Eagles get the best of him, it's going to be, ah, you see, told you, he's a bum, blah, blah, blah. So I, that's the one I'm really looking forward to. And I'm sure the Doug Peterson game, you know, listen, he doesn't have enough bullets down there in, in Jacksonville. Um, but I'm sure it's going to be a little emotional for, for him to go up against the, uh, the Eagles. By the way, that, that, that divorce there, that, that's another one I still can't quite – quite figure out i mean like try we're still trying to get to the bottom of it it's like it's like doug pretty much fired himself he did, didn't want to be here and and you know he one day i'm sure he'll get in front of a, a microphone and tell us the the full story you know but it's like they got rid of doug and and wentz you know what i mean it's it was it's maddening here finally here you think there's more heat on hertz this year or do you think there's more heat on howie roseman because, again, one thing's for sure. I know the three-year contract extension deuces. They gave it to him. But, again, like you just said, here's a guy who fired. I mean, take a look at the whole scenario. You fired a Hall of Fame coach in Andy Reid. You fired a coach who won your Super Bowl. Now he's coming back here. And now you put Sirianni in the building, and he's on training wheels still. Second year, we don't know what happens. We saw what happened with Matt Nagy in Chicago. Yeah. He won coach of the year. Then he was fired two years yeah. later. You're only gauged on every year you put a win loss. So, I mean, he, this is on Howie. There's no more excuses. There's nobody in the building anymore to blame if this thing goes south. True, but I, Howie's got nine lives. Um, he sure he does. does. And, and he's got a very unique relationship with the owner, Jeffrey Lurie. Um, Lurie looks at him almost as a, as a, as a de facto, you know, family member, like, like a son. And, and give Howie credit, you know, when Chip Kelly came here and, you know, sh you know, shoved him aside, you know, Howie, you know, had his tail between his legs, but came back up through the ranks and they won a Super Bowl. And I think that Super Bowl, granted, it was, you know, 2017. So, you know, five years ago or whatever. But I think that bought him a lot of time. And I, I do not think Howie's on the hot seat. Um, Howie, he gets he gets a lot of he gets a lot of heat for the draft picks sometimes, you know, not doing the great greatest with the drafts, but he, he gets great. He gets great marks for getting those draft picks every year. The guy's it's like, he's, he's got two, two first round draft picks in his pocket. We don't know how he does it every year. He, he fleeces some team to give them draft picks. Yeah. You know, he may not be, use them all that well. Um, but I, I think he, he's, he's tough on Don, man. I, I, I wish I had it like him. Hey, I, I, I leave you with this. So I had Beasley Reese on. Oh, I, love couple, him. I had Beasley on a couple of weeks. I'd known him since we were in Tampa together. And he goes like this. He goes, Hey, you know, deuces. I go, yeah. He goes, 
you know he's over at you know you know he he's over at six ABC and I go what I'm looking through my thing and I'm, I'm he's like bro you don't know that and I go you know what hey give, give me a break here you know CTE does happen to certain people every now and then and he goes like this get him so Beasley wanted me to send some love to you man because you know I I I love the fact that two of my favorite people man broadcasters in one of the most passionate cities there is and thank you so much man deuces thank you for doing this i hope we can do this again thank you very much i gotta throw it up for you man oh baby there you go to you oh, hey be looking for that because i'm gonna be posting that all okay, right okay for all the you guys and uh, hey the rock's my boy if you see him, me and him go back and forth uh -huh. on my twitter now yeah the rock's gonna absolutely love that deuces thank you brother thank you you got it that is deuces rogers from six abc we really appreciate him stepping in with us, too. Grant Cohn from the Bay Area is also going to join us. That'll be at the top of the hour. Don't forget, my friends, Morgan & Morgan, where the fee is free. If you're in the market for an attorney, you've been hurt or injured on the job, Morgan & Morgan is the place for you. For the people is not a slogan. This is who they are. For the past 30 years, they've collected over $13.5 billion for their clients, making sure you and your family get the fair compensation you so sorely need. Over 800 attorneys and offices in Philadelphia, New York, Florida. Nobody is bigger, and nobody will go to battle more for you than Morgan & Morgan. Call them at 800-512-1600. That's 800-512-1600. The call is free. The consultation is free. 800-512-1600. Open 24-7, seven days a week. And when you call Morgan & Morgan, tell them Dan Celio sent you. When choosing a lawyer for your injury case, you may ask, does the size of the law firm matter? Well, of course it does. The insurance company, they're huge with unlimited resources. And whether your case is big or small, they're built to bully you out of the money you're owed. But here's the good news. We're big too, the biggest actually. And we're built to fight to make them pay for all that was taken from you. Size is our strength. There's only one Morgan & Morgan, forthepeople.com.